The little males are still up on the bed. The big females have done their thing, came and gone. Now, where are they? Can you still catch them? Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about how to catch them. All right, we're gonna talk about spawn. Not really post-spawn, even though we're gonna talk about post-spawners. The spawn may still be going on. The question is, where do the females go immediately after pulling off the bed? Now, I'm lucky enough to have fished some ultra clear bodies of water. Like I said, if you could see this water that I'm sitting in right now, it's 15 to 20 foot clear right now. And this lake doesn't get real deep. It's steep, but it doesn't get real deep. You know, maybe the deepest part of it is 65 feet. Average is about 35. So I've actually gotten to see a lot of bass activity and movements firsthand over the years of fishing this little body of water. One of the things that I've really noticed is when the females begin to pull off the bed. Once they've done their thing, they really have to recover. I've gone down banks a hundred times and seen giant bass hiding under branches that are no bigger than my thumb. Those are females. They're almost impossible to catch. A lot of times with the water warming as this first group or second wave of bass pull off the beds, you're gonna find a lot of shad that's beginning to move into these places where they're gonna spawn. And these shad are gonna be super shallow. I mean, from zero to 10 feet. Now they may pull out in some of the areas I live and some of the lakes I live, I've seen them pull out as much as over a hundred foot of water, 90 foot, 45 foot. Sometimes they'll be over 30, 35 foot, 25 foot. But they're gonna be super shallow. They're gonna be kind of out in this open water. They'll be relating to something, some sort of point, some sort of rock wall, something. So what I've seen on these secondary points, you know, in these creeks, a lot of times is those shad will be there and just underneath them, and you'll see them, they're not schooled up, but they're, they're just dots scattered underneath them from 20 to 30 foot down to five foot. And they'll just be a bunch, just scattered out in a water column. That's your big bass. Those are your females that have just come off the bed. They suspend around these balls of shad. They're not chasing. You're not gonna see them busting shad. They don't have that kind of energy to exert yet. And when an unsuspecting shad just strolls by, they reach out and suck it in. We know how much power those things have got nice and easy so they start to feed up and they do become more active generally within a few days they're going to move out deep but they stop and have their self a quick burger along the route right or a fish sandwich whatever you want to say <laughs> now those fish can be really tough and for us guys that don't have live scope yet but man, I hope to get one before too long. We can find those fish. Now we have to fan cast old school methods, but they can be caught. Now they're not gonna chase things. So it has to be a very slow methodical bait. And I've got three that when you are out there and you're scanning and you see this, three that you can throw at these bass. The first one that I love is my good old Duo Realis spy bait or spin bait alpha this is the 72 it is not going to make a lot of noise it's not going to give off a lot of flash it's not going to give off too much it's not going to be too obnoxious like a spinner bait or a rattle trap they are just sitting there and they know what they're looking for so that spy bait is a great tool when there's a little bit of chop, when there's a little bit of cloud cover in ultra clear. The next bait that I'm gonna go with, and I think it's great, you know, I said no, no spinner baits. Well, what's the difference between a spinner bait and an underspin? A lot of the light actually gets blocked by the swim bait onto the blade of a underspin. 
so it looks a little muted. So that underspin is great. You can count it down, reel it down there real slow, and that's another way to get some of those big females to react. Remember, they're not gonna chase anything this time of year when you see them out there. The other thing, the good old swim bait. And this is one of my favorite. This is the Silver Smoke from Ramsey's. I love, I love this bait, love, love, love this swim bait. It is a very subtle swim bait coming through the water, which is something that I love. And that's gonna be something that looks more realistic to those bass. You don't have to have the latest and greatest graphs to be able to do this because the shad themselves will be relating to some sort of structure, okay? A lot of times you'll even see the shad just flip on the surface and you can get out there and just kind of fan cast around, count it down, and you'll be surprised at what you can catch. Let's talk about each setup that I have here. So for the spy bait, this is my dedicated spy bait rod. I fished it on six pound test. Yes, six pound Pro 100 fluorocarbon by K9, of course. This is my Lose Speed Spin. This is my Dixie Custom Rod. It's actually the 3B. It's a 7.4 medium, moderate, fast, which is perfect for this. But it's actually a... Uh, tight lining rod but it works great for the spy bait dual reality spy bait guys any version really is what i love i use them all the time best spy bait out there on the market not not sponsored by them at all this is my underspin setup uh, a lot of times this is uh, one of the vmc underspins but if I'm in open water, I'm using my ledge head. I want an open hook, not a not a closed hook. Just better hookup ratio. But this is actually one of the suppressor rods from old 18 rods, guys. This is a incredible rod. Love the handle, love the grip, love the rod, love the colors on it too. It's just, it's just, I like that great. And I drive a silver truck. I've last two or three trucks I've owned has been silver. This is kind of that gray uh, look to it, that muted gray, really love it. But anyway, this is a 7.3. And again, you'll notice the rods are gonna be long. I wanna make a long cast. This is a 7.3, medium heavy, fast action. Gonna put that a lot of times with about a half ounce uh, underspin head, okay? Again, Ramsey's, this is my swim bait right here this is shad color anyway all that'll be in the description ramsey bait company he makes uh, my swim baits and i love them here we come up again a great color very translucent it's got my ledge head lures half ounce head on there and oh sorry forgot to tell you actually but uh, a lose bb1 pro now this is the old bb1 pro but the new lfs's are great i've got two, three on the way. These are a little bigger, a little bigger spool. Uh, the Super Duty would work great too. The wide spool for long cast. This is a seven, six. And again, a Ramsey's smoke silver, very translucent. Again, adapt the colors to the clarity of the water you're fishing. But this is also a lose. And this is also canine. And I've got 15 pound test here. Sorry, K9 Pro 100 12 pound test there. This is a great way as soon as they move off the beds for you to get out there and find these bigger females. You're fishing for five most of the time when you're doing this, it is gonna be tough because these bass are not actively feeding. Remember that. Five, six, seven, eight days, they'll be out there deep. They'll be out there feeding. It won't be no problem to catch them. As always, guys, that is a super secret tip that I've not shared with anybody. Uh, I know a lot of big swim baiters out in California. It's kind of something that I took from them. And uh, because a lot of times what they'll do is they will throw these big swim baits and they won't even work them uh, in post spawn. They'll just kind of let the wind blow them and, you know, they might twitch them just a little bit and those big fish will come up and eat them after post spawn. So, Kind of something that I've adapted to and started looking and it's worked for me for the past few years. All right, questions, comments in the comment section below. You guys tell me what you think about it. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe 
And as always, you guys rock. All right, boys and girls, let's pick who won the very last Mystery Tackle Box giveaway on the Bass Geek channel. All right, we've got it copied. Let's paste it in. We're going to filter duplicates, include the replies. We'll see ourselves if the text was included. 209 comments. Let's see who won. Jeff Allen, 5299. Tennessee Two Steps, good tips. Wish I was in Southern Waters, but should work here. Also, in a couple of weeks, can't believe people don't claim them. Well, Jeff, let's see if you claim it. <laughs> so we will uh, reach out to you and let you know that you won, and we will verify. And if you claim the box, we'll send it. If not, we'll... Uh, We'll either add it to my collection or we'll give it away to somebody else. How's that? All right. Congratulations.